Hello everyone, I'm Rob Bennett, he's Dan O'Hara from the Sports Express Network, and this is the Auburn Pride Season Preview Show. From Pop Warner to the Dome, from 5Ks to marathons, from Little League to Work Leagues, focusing on the community sports lifestyle in Central New York. Oh, do it, do it, do it. All right, so today we're going to introduce you to the Auburn Pride, the area's local semi-professional football team. Again, here with Dan O'Hara and Coach Greg Bell. Coach, how are you doing? Great, how are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. So first thing we got to do is um, explain what, what is the Auburn Pride? What are you guys doing? Auburn Pride's uh, Auburn, New York semi-pro football team. This is our second year in existence. Uh, Auburn did have a semi-pro team for the uh, two years and then we have this is our second year with this team so so I, I gotta know semi-pro what does that mean semi-pro it's the next level to after high school to get uh, a tryout for arena or possibly even go farther than that um, last year the Auburn Pride sent four players to uh, pro tryouts for arena teams so, right. you know, so hopefully this year we can get more so there's some real skill out there yeah, Auburn is a, is a small demographic. Um, we're kind of, you know, you're competing against Syracuse. You're competing against teams in Rochester where they have a big pool to, to draw athletes from. Auburn's kind of small, um, but Auburn has a lot of talent, which uh, you'll see in the show. All right, well, you know, just getting into that, when I first heard about this, I thought it was a bunch of weekend warriors just going out and doing their thing, but but that's not the case. This is these this is uh, skilled athletes that we're talking about. Is that the case? No, we're having fun. It's weekend <laughs> warriors, man. That love the game of football. That play it for for the love of the game, and uh, you know, with aspirations of moving forward. Well, that, that's fantastic. And the majority of the players, where do they come from? We've got. A lot of guys from Auburn, they probably make up, I don't know, maybe 60%, 70% of our team. Uh, guys from Syracuse all the way down to Corning, New York, over to Rochester. So they come from, from all over. I've been begging to ask you this question because I want to hear your answer. But what, right, is your, what is your official role with the Auburn Pride? Uh, I yell a lot. <laughs> no, it's uh, just trying to put the best product on the field we can, doing everything it takes to... To, to make an organization thrive and run run well uh, and run on its own, be, be self-sufficient. We've got a board of directors. Uh, Pat Yurko is the president. He's a Lemoyne College professor, a very intelligent individual. And, you know, we've got Tracy Akins. We've got uh, Tiffany Sharp. We've, we've got some some pretty good people on the uh, on the board so well, that's fantastic you mentioned that this is the second year of the Auburn Pride. Year two. Tell us a little bit about what happened year one. Year one was a learning curve for, for me, uh, how to run a team. Um, but uh, we did pretty good, man. We made the playoffs. Um, we had a bunch of first team all league selections. We had the 2018 NFA rushing leader, Henry Bradley, uh, almost got 2,000 yards for, for the season. So um, we got a good nucleus to build off of. And this year, you know, when you prove yourself your first year, more and more people want to come out and play for you. So sure. now, you know, the roster numbers are going up and the talent level's going up. And 2019, we're a couple of days away, so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. All right, so you mentioned the league, NFA, the Northeastern Football Alliance. You talked about Syracuse. You talked about some, some other teams. What, what's the history behind that league, the NFA? NFA's probably... Well, in my opinion, it's a league that you always heard about. Uh, it's, you know, the powerhouses are in that league. you got Syracuse, who was a national champion last year. You've got Monroe County Sting, who's won several championships. You've got Troy Fighting Irish out of Troy, New York. They've won several championships. Um, you got the boys up north, Carthage. Um, they, you know, they get their, their talent based on, um, you know, military people that come in and out of Fort Drum. So... You know, one year they may be down, and the next year they're a powerhouse. So you never know what they're going to have on the field year to year. So you can't go there, – there's not one game in the season that we go, yeah, this is this definite win. Just can't do it. Yeah, I want to start talking to Greg a little bit, but can you first tell us about the, the, the coaches of the Pride? Um, well, Greg Bell, he, he's running the offense uh, this year. Um, changed some things up. Scott 
Wilson went to the defensive side of the ball, which, quite frankly, that's where he belongs, in my opinion. So you didn't just get fired from the offense? You just thought the defense may work out better for No, you? I fired him. Oh, okay. No, gotcha. no, we just uh, you know wanted to give a different look, and Greg was willing to come in, and and uh, you know we were really looking for somebody defensively because Omar Bailey uh, left. So Scott was the right choice to, okay. to put him in there. So offensive coordinator Greg Bell. Greg Bell. Defensive coordinator Scott Wilson. Yeah, Scott shares that role with Sal DeSanza. Uh, used to coach at Wheatsburg, been around forever. I think he coached God back in the day, but uh, <laughs> he uh, he's he's got a lot of knowledge, and he's you know he's the reason I got into coaching, to be honest with you. So I could listen to that guy talk football all day. That's, all day, that's for sure. Head coach. Well, I don't know. We we'll cross that bridge, right. I guess, when we come to it. There's some things that we've got to work out, kind of waiting on, you know, other people to to either commit or not commit. But right now we got to move forward, and I, I, right now we don't need it. Between Scott and Greg, the knowledge of the game, I mean, it, they, they can manage the clock. They know the rules of the game. They can, you know, bounce ideas off each other, whether, whether it's offense or defense. So, I mean, if we were to have a head coach, I'd probably be both of them. Yeah. I don't know if that's even legal, but we'll do it. <laughs> we can give it a shot, right? Give it a shot. <laughs> All right, well, we've made Greg staying around here long enough without saying anything. Again, Coach, welcome. And, uh, you know, just give us briefly some of your background in football history. Let the people of Auburn and the surrounding communities know about you. Sure. Um, I played high school football at Liverpool High School, um, and then I went on to play um, Division II uh, football at um, St. Anselm College out in New Hampshire. Uh, I played so there good football being played at St. Anselm. I know that for a fact. <laughs> Uh, I played out there for three years, and then I transferred to Hartwick College in Oneonta, New York, and uh, finished up there. And then um, I played a, a couple games for the um, Auburn Commanders okay. um, two years ago, I believe. And that's so. a semi-professional football yes. team? Yes, yep. You know, uh, I'm going to let you answer this question. A lot of talk, you know, looking through the NFA teams, semi-professional, professional development, all mm -hmm. types of things you know, described the same way, but is the overall goal to play better, move on to the next level, just continue playing football? You know, where, where, where do you see that whole thing? Um, I think you get guys, um, you know, in that are looking for, you know, all three types of things. Um, you know, some guys are, are out there just to play the game. Um, some guys are, are really trying to make a, sh make a last shot um, at moving on to, you know, try and play arena or, um, you know, get a chance somewhere um yeah. and uh you know you could you could see the talent from from that you see guys from um that have played in college guys that have played you know in the semi-pro for for a while and then guys just coming out of high school so well i've had the opportunity to be at a couple practices i've actually watched you coach but also watched you move around a little bit too <laughs> you look like you could still play are you playing or you're playing days over um well it's a toss up. It's uh the real battle is uh mind over body. The mind <laughs> I know that very the well. mind tells me to get on the field, but the body, you know, fights against that. So you wanna see if that still fits? <laughs> <laughs> Got some shoulder pads in the back too, right? Coach? I brought everything. I brought everything. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Alright, All right. so, so what can we expect from the Auburn Pride offense this year under your direction? Um, I think I wouldn't say that we're taking a new identity. I'd say we're building off um, and our, our identity from last year. Um, you know, when we have the you know returning leader rush in rushing for the NFA, uh, you can't really you know set that aside. So yeah. um, I think our run game is definitely going to be important, um, and um, I think we got a real taste of that at our last practice, and um, it was a big reminder to us as you know yeah. to what we we really have um, with us, but. Um, we're going to, you know, show a lot of new looks and um, stuff that um, a lot of the teams in the league haven't seen uh, before from us. So. A, lot, a lot of changes there, too. Uh, we'll take a look at this video right here. This is, uh, you know, his old line from last year. Uh, only two guys, number 54 and number 68, are, are still with us. The rest have retired or moved on. Um, he's got uh, Danny Giannone uh, back there, a quarterback, along with JB. JB will probably get the start. Kaz Rouser, number zero, big time player, can make anything happen. Uh, Trey Backus, same type of kid, very fast, agile. 
uh, can do a lot on the field. So, you know, he's got some weapons there, and it, uh, you know, started with the old line, and this year, you know, we've added a lot new new players, and I think we've we've upped the old line a little bit. All right. So, if you're gonna run, you're gonna run Henry Bradley to the fullest extent. You're gonna need those big boys up front to, to do their job. That's for sure. Um, you know, any you want to talk about any of the players, any things that you're expecting from them this season? Um, yeah. Um, we we added a lot of new guys. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of younger talent. Um, it's a name that. You know, some people might hear a lot is Sultani Campbell. Um, he's going to be a big player for us. Um, I believe he played high school at um, ITC. Okay. Um, Derek Taylor, I um, uh, believe a product from Auburn, Auburn. High School. Um, he's going to be a big guy for us. Um, and just, you know, we got a lot of playmakers. Nice. So, um, and I will be using them all to the full extent. So. Um, you know, I just ask out of my guys every day, you know, hard work and attention to detail, and, you know, and that's, that's gonna, that's what's gonna get us wins. Fantastic. So speaking about Henry Bradley, you know, 2018 NFA rushing leader, uh, almost had 2,000 yards for the season. I think he was short by maybe 30 yards or something like that. Uh, we'll take a look at this video and see what Henry Bradley brings to the table. Um, here he is uh, getting the ball inside. Makes a great move, gets to the outside, great block downfield by Kaz Rouser, off to the races, touchdown. Henny also makes uh, stuff out of nothing here. It's all clogged up on the left side. He goes back right, beautiful cut up the field. Uh, big gain on a third down for a first down. And he also catches the ball out of the backfield, and he's a uh, big, strong kid, good catch, runs the kid over for a touchdown. So that's what Henry brings to the table, and uh, he's healthy and looks looks pretty good. So. Anything else you want to say about your offense? Uh, no, just come out and uh, see the show. All right, Coach, great. Thanks for being here today. Thank and, you. Uh, we're going to be doing this show once a week, so hopefully you'll come back and talk Absolutely. about the, the previous game and what we're looking at in the future. So Absolutely. thanks for being here, Coach. Thank you. All right. We'll take a little break and uh, come back and talk Auburn Pride defense. Welcome back to the Auburn Pride Season Preview Show. I'm Rob Bennett with Dan O'Hara. And joining us is Scott Wilson, defensive coordinator of the Auburn Pride. Did everybody see that? There's ghosts in the house. I did, I, I did see that. That's crazy. Did you cause that? Did you bring the ghost with you, Coach? I don't know, but it definitely was moving. <laughs> the ghost of players past. All right, so, Coach, we, uh, we made Coach Bell introduce himself to the Auburn community. I'd like to do the same for you. Okay. Um, I uh, grew up in Auburn, uh, been, been an Auburn resident, for the majority of my life, um, played high school ball in Auburn, and then uh, did some coaching in the Pop Warner, and then I also did some coaching at uh, Port Byron in um, the Modified program. I coached with actually Dan O'Hara at the Modified. And um, how was that team that you guys coached together, the Modified team? Well, technically, you're not supposed to keep score modified. Oh, okay. Yeah. But with that being said. Yeah, we won some games. All right, okay. Yeah, we we did we did all right. <laughs> we did all right. <laughs> all right, sorry to interrupt you, coach. Go ahead. Um, now I've moved a couple times. I currently just moved to Marcellus, but uh, you know I, I'm always an Auburnian at heart. I grew up here. My family's from here, so I I definitely take pride in being part of this program. Well, that's fantastic. Talk to us a little bit about the transition. Last year, offensive coordinator. This year, defensive coordinator. Um. Dan approached me and told me that uh, Coach Bell was um, excited to come work with uh, work with the team, and he said that Coach Bailey was stepping down, and it would be a great transition for me to move the defense, which I coached when we were at Port Byron. I've coached in Pop Warner, and, and <clears throat> Greg, being an offensive guy, would take the offense, and I was I was all for it. You know, I. I ultimately want this team to be successful, so whatever it takes. Well, if you've ever watched an NFL game with Scott Wilson, his <laughs> defensive mind gets him on the edge of the couch, and I just sit back and enjoy it. Because it's, it's, if you've never witnessed it, it's quite a spectacle. Oh, I guess we're going to have to what witness it. What are you doing? It. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Maybe once the season starts and we're doing the show, we can just, just film coach. Oh, and, boy. Uh, some uh, comedic effect, I guess. Oh, actually, on the field, he's pretty calm. It's when he's armchairing it that it gets out of control. Yeah, I try. I try to keep a uh, calm demeanor on the sidelines, 
hoping that will kind of rub off on the players because I don't want them to see me upset or panic so they don't become upset sure. or panic. Well, but, that secret's out. <laughs> yeah. But um might be a little different this year, coaching defense. On offense, you want people to stay under control. On defense, you want people to be pretty wired up and excited and full of energy just in a, in a, in a positive way. So I might be a little more animated this year than in previous years. Sure. Can you tell us a little bit about your defensive philosophy, what kind of scheme you're going to run or anything like that? Yeah, we um, – we're going to have a 4-3 as a base, um, and we, we've got a few other fronts that we can run depending on down and distance, um, but it's, it's a basic 4-3. We run multiple coverage schemes, uh, multiple blitz packages out of that. Um, <clears throat> for us, I think it's a, it's a great personnel package. We, we have more D linemen than we do linebackers, and the linebackers we have are are great, but that's not our strength as far as depth. Depth, we have more of that on the D line, and um, so I think for us that works that works well. And the the ability to blitz out of that from multiple points on the field from multiple players kind of makes us uh, a little unpredictable. I've been trying to um, put in where we're walking around a little bit, not standing in the same place. I'm moving players in different positions, kind of like. You know, if you watch a Baltimore Ravens game, guys sure. are moving around. It makes the offense struggle a little to figure out who's coming on what play. Trying to give the quarterbacks, the opposing quarterbacks, different looks and uh, have yeah. them keep them guessing. A little uh, big thing in the NFL last year was this amoeba defense. Are you going to be doing any amoeba type stuff? Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the principle behind sure. what I was just talking about. It, it uh, you know, I for the last couple of years coaching offense, it's easy really to – figure out, okay, this team stays in a cover one or a cover three the whole game or the majority of the game, you can kind of scheme against that. When you go up against a team that is 4-3 one time, 4-4, four, 3-5, four, you know, it, it definitely makes you work as a coach, as a player, as a sure. line, a quarterback. So that's what I'm trying to do is trying to make us, you know, where we make things harder on the offense, where we dictate the game versus them dictating the game. Well, he had a he had a you know pretty good nucleus from last year, uh, going into this year, and he talks about his D line, and uh, you know there's a lot of veterans on that on mm -hmm. that defense that make it. Uh, we'll look at this real quick. Um, right here, he's got number 25, Delquan Ross. Um, the, the kid is just he, he brings it every game. Hits yes. like a truck. Uh, does does really well for us. Uh, Joe I just Hans, have to say before you go forward, I'm sorry. But that picture that you were just showing of Del Quan Ross might be the best sports photograph I've ever taken. I, I didn't take that. So. I did. Oh, you did? I did. That's nice. what I'm saying. Nice. I got a good one. I finally had the camera out at the right time and was able to That's take a That's a great picture. It shows uh, what he can do. And the guy who's actually covering has got him by about six inches. Yeah. So uh, he played the ball well. Here you got Joe Hahn. He's been around for a while. Um, he... Uh, He's pretty solid. He gets he keeps getting better every year. Auburn native Miguel Martinez. He's like the uh, captain of the D-backs. Charles Gary, big time linebacker, uh, great at blitzing, brings it. Um, JB, who's going to play some quarterback, also plays safety. He's pretty solid at that position. But there's Shamar Williams, uh, number six. He's the heart and soul. He's the motivator. He brings it every game. He's fast. He's mean, and he just comes. Unre you know, relentlessly. Plays with an edge. So, yeah, yeah. So Scott was talking about the uh, the D line as well, and uh, I I think that we have one of the best interior uh, linemen. Well, I say interior, but he plays everywhere. <laughs> Dominic Sedlick, another uh, product of of Auburn. D Lo. Uh, D Lo. Here he is, yeah. interior, fast off the ball, quick hands, gets upfield. Forces the sack, great play, D'Lo, and he gives you a little taste at the end of what he's all about. We put him <laughs> on the edge here. Hey, look at this, man. He gets upfield, does a great job tracking the ball, getting his deepest ball, making a play, and again, the moves come out. A <laughs> little extra, we can put him on offense, put him at fullback, have him bang some people for Henry. Gets out on a on a uh, 36 lead, bam, gets a big, big time block, another one down the field. There goes Henry off to the races. So, D'Lo adds a lot um, for the for Scott's defense, and uh, you know that's a great picture. shows shows his athleticism, and D'Lo was one of those ones that uh, last year got uh, invited to go to Albany for an arena tryout, and uh, 
they kept him another day, nice. and I thought they uh, were going to call him back in December. They got a hold of me, wanted his information, uh, then got a hold of me again in January, and uh, I, I thought D'Lo would be gone, but uh, he's still with us. So good for us, you know, not yeah. so good for him. I'd like to see him play at a higher level. Yeah. Does the Pride have any players from that 2006 Auburn State Championship team? Oh, yeah, you've got uh, – Anthony Adams, you've got Miguel Martinez, uh, you've got, uh, did I say D-Lo? D-Lo, D-Lo. 2006. Uh, off the top of my head, that's that's the three I can uh, remember. Still one of the best stories ever from, from, from this area. It Just, is. Uh, you know, make a movie out of that one someday, maybe. We'll see what happens. All right, Coach, what else do you have to say about the defense? Um... I do believe that uh, <clears throat> we are we're going to be one of the tougher squads in the in the league on defense. I I for the first time I can recall I have an incredible athlete at every single position. Um, it's like any time you coach. Yeah. Sometimes you got one or two spots you're a little leery of, and you try to hide them a little bit. There's none of that. We have incredible athletes at every position. And we have depth. We have multiple guys that are more than more than willing and more than capable to fill in, whether they be, you know, the next guy stepping up on defense or some of the offensive guys coming over to defense. Um, so I, I'm just excited to see uh, to see what we can do. I think we're gonna Stop. we're gonna make some plays. And it gets better because uh, practice Sunday we had three new guys come in uh, off the street, and uh, you know practice with us. It was their first practice, and, uh, yeah, it kind of opened your eyes a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're not eligible for this game, but the, the next game they will be. So, you know, some more depth, some more speed, some more talent. So we just keep keep building. Well, yeah. for all the people that are, are watching this, is there still room on the pride for Absolutely. big-time football players? Absolutely. Okay. Always, always room for, for improvement. All right. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit just because he's in the room. So what do you think about the job that Greg's doing you know, trying to fill your shoes. Oh, I think he's doing a great job. Um, at, after a couple of years of you know doing it, I realized that offense takes a little more time to gel, and I saw Greg going through a little bit of the the growing pains. You know, not only not maybe having all his guys there all the time, but just that meshing of the offense. On Sunday, I saw him with basically his entire starting unit. Yeah, and. They were they were making some plays against us, which, I, in reality, I find good because then it kind of humbles our guys a little, makes them hungry, but it hyped up the offense because it gives them that belief that they can do do great things. So I, I think his offense is definitely it's improving is what you you know what you look for. You want it to continue to get better, and from what I've seen from day one at Pine Grove indoors to sure. last Sunday, it's worlds so if we asked them to step outside would your would your view change at all or is that uh, you telling them like you see it no that's that's on the money <laughs> trying to no, pick a could, fight greg's, greg's doing a great <laughs> job what just happened <laughs> um okay this is the auburn pride season preview show rob bennett and dan o'hare from the sports express network we're going to take a break and then come back and talk to you a little bit about the upcoming season and the monroe county spread the monroe county sting sounds good all right Hey, welcome back to Sports Express Network. Rob Bennett is doing a little production back there for us. So we're going to talk to the coaches about the games we've got coming up. Uh, the Auburn Pride kicks off this Saturday, the 8th, against Monroe County Sting. Home game at Holland. Uh, what do you think at Holland Stadium? Pretty awesome, huh? Yeah, it's a great atmosphere. Um, I'm excited to, uh, you know, start out the season. You know, it's always great to start out the season with a home game. Um you know, hopefully the, the stands are packed and, you know, it's a great atmosphere. So. And then uh, we're away on 622 against Broome County. Broome County is one of them teams where one year they're a powerhouse, the next year not so, you know, not so good. But uh, Jeremy does a nice job down there with recruiting, uh, getting his, his team ready to play. So, uh, yeah, we'll be traveling to, to Binghamton for that. Um, probably expect the same as we've seen. In the past, they probably got more athletes, more people ready to play, and that should probably be a tough game for us on, on the road. 20, uh, then 6:29, we're away uh, to the Upstate Predators. A um, lot of hype around that team. Um, don't really know much about them. They're they, uh, the NFA combined the East and the West, and now they play each other. So the teams out in Rochester 
are new to, to, to the Pride anyway, um, playing them. So we'll have to get some film on them, break it down, and, and see where we go from there. And then 7-13, we're at Syracuse. Mm. We know a lot about Syracuse. Syracuse last year was the national champion and uh, the NFA champion. And uh, they, they've upped their their roster a little bit, too. They got this kid, Jason Boltis, who, uh, you know, we, we got an opportunity to watch him play last week. And uh, kid's a real deal. He, he can throw. Uh, got a good vision. Pick a part of offense. What did you see? Or pick part of defense? <clears throat> yeah, he uh... – he definitely he reads the field well. He has a you know, quick release. Um, he doesn't he doesn't hold the ball. I only saw them get to him I think one time. Um, he he definitely makes his reads and gets rid of the ball. So uh, it's going to be imperative to us to get pressure on him. And defensively, you know, Syracuse has always been strong defensively. Uh, the good thing for us is Blair Taylor, uh, number ten, their number one linebacker, moved to Florida. Uh, and he's tearing it up in Florida, but this kid could do anything. Uh, they played. He played middle linebacker. He played running back. He punted the ball 50 yards. I mean, the kid was an absolute athlete. So, you know, offensively, you, you know what you're going against. We got a little taste of the Syracuse yep. and uh, what they bring to the table. Big 94 in the middle, D. Harris, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, um, you know, it was good that we – we're able to get a scrimmage against them to kind of see what, <clears throat> you know, what they're gonna, what they're bringing this year, um, you know, have a little taste of their roster, um, and, you know, we didn't show too much to them, um, and that was part of the game plan, um, so I think that'll be a you know, big advantage for us uh, going into um, the games because we see them twice this year, so um, that was one of the things I, I made sure of that we didn't. Um, give away our offense too much so yeah and their coaches up there chris gorman ed watkins they've been around the game a long time they do a phenomenal job getting their team team uh ready to play so then july 27th uh we're home against carthage and personally we love carthage, I like carthage. uh very well run organization uh leon does a phenomenal job up there with with his group um and you got to respect that team. This is a team that's based in, in mm -hmm. Watertown. Um, they basically, their roster is armed forces guys from the Army. So year to year, you don't know what you're going to get. I know last year when we went to Carthage and played them, they had a kid that just got off a plane, and he was in Korea. He was stationed in Korea, yeah. and uh, he had, what, one practice under his belt, and he came in the second half, and we were a little nervous. The he, kid could play. He was good. So you, you never know what you're going to get with them. Uh, defensively, they're always pretty solid, good linebacking crew. Um, they flow well to the ball. Yeah, you know? I, I, uh, I always enjoy our games with them. They, they seem to be competitive games, um, a lot of sportsmanship, not a lot of the trash talking that sometimes you get with other games. So it, it's, it's one of those games, whether it's here or there, you always enjoy playing it. Yeah, and the coaches will probably be hanging out with the guys from Carthage after the game because <laughs> yeah. they're just phenomenal human beings there in, in Carthage. Um, then August 3rd, we go to Troy. It's a three-hour bus ride. We'll take an Onondaga coach to Troy and, and, and go at them again. Uh, then August 10th, Lockport Wildcats, they were in the finals last year against Syracuse. Uh, got an opportunity to watch them play. They're solid. Uh, Roland does a great job up there with, with that group. Um and then uh, August 17th at Ithaca, uh, Xavier got a good group down there. They do things very well. And I think last year they won the double-A championship, I believe. They so yeah. so I think they're, they're, they're moving up slowly but surely. And then 824, the last home game, August 24th, against Syracuse again. So they'll be coming to our house the last game of the season. Hopefully there's some implications on playoffs, home field advantage, and that, that game, there'll, there'll be some bloodshed in that game, I'm sure. So that's it. That's the schedule. Uh, like I say, we kick off this Saturday, 7 p.m. Come out, support Auburn, uh, the Auburn players, and uh, we hope to give you a, a good show. Okay, Dan, so we've talked about the pride. We've talked about the board. We've covered the offense. We've, we've covered the defense. I think we did a nice job of uh, explaining to the community what the Pride is, is, is all about for, for the most part, but I know that the Pride is really into giving back to the community. Last year there were a number 
of um, what do you call it? Themes. Themes, yeah. Themes. Thanking, you know, armed forces members, thanking first responders, things like that. Um, what's going on this year with regards to all that stuff? Pretty much the same. Um, Got to honor our veterans. That's that's near and dear to my heart sure. um, with my family. So, you know, we're going to honor veterans. We're going to have veterans night, uh, you know, uh, emergency service night. I believe we've got a Auburn Community Hospital night, um, you know, Pop Warner night, community night, that free game at uh, Seward School. So, you know, a lot of things that, you, you know, we're trying to do to give back. Uh, sure. You know, all our home games are run by the, the Auburn uh, Sports Boosters. So, you know, we put some money into their pocket. They help us. We help them, you know, try to get that, that community together. Because, you know, you get out and about in the community of Auburn and, you know, there's not a lot of a lot of that, and there needs to be more of it. It's so, a great community. It's all about giving back, and I know you guys do a lot. I know you do a ton with Auburn Pop Warner football as well, both the players and the coaches. I remember over the winter there were some Auburn Pride football players going out and shoveling driveways and doing that to get the street signs in, in people's yards. You know, that's really what this organization, the Auburn Pride, is all about and would really love the community sport. So excuse me, the community support. So get out to Holland Stadium. We've got a bunch of different opportunities for you to um, get to see some fantastic football and uh, get, get to know these players. And I think that will uh, continue to, to grow and um, build upon in, in the Auburn community. Yeah, every player has a story, and some of them are pretty good. Well, we're going to um, tell a lot of them, that's for sure. Yeah, hopefully we can uh, you know feature a certain player every week and uh, – you know, find out a little bit more about their background and what they're all about. Most of these guys have families, jobs, and, uh, you know, they come out on the weekends and risk their life and limb to, to play a game they love. So, All right, so how did you think this went today? Uh, pretty good. Scott threw me off there a little bit. Uh, you know, I, uh, I don't like them lying, but, uh, you know, right. went pretty well. Sounds good. So you want to do this again? I'd love to do it again. Right, so um, we going to cover local sports? Yeah, let's, cover let's a little try Auburn. to do this again. And, um not only cover the Auburn Pride, but cover sports in the entire community. Um, Saturday's game, we'll come back and do a breakdown. We'll see how that goes yeah. and uh, see where we need to improve and, and what we need to do. Yeah, I know the big news this week. Skinny Atlas baseball team won their first sectional baseball championship since 2004. They did. And uh, they were the Cardiac Kids. Won three consecutive games, either in the bottom of the seventh or extra innings and uh, sexual championship game won in 14 innings, four to three. So uh, those are the types of stories we're going to talk about, cover some Auburn Little League baseball. You know, we'll get big into the USA football and the pop corner stuff. But, um, you know, seriously, if there are some events that you would like Dan and myself and the Sports Express Network to cover, you know, please let us know. You can reach me at rob at sportsexpress.com. And... Uh, we can go from there. And we got some good guests lined up. Got Syracuse Dan Conley, Absolutely. best linebacker I've ever seen play. Uh, uh, Leroy, Leroy Collins. Collins. Got a book in, coming out, then a movie. Absolutely. I think we should be extras in the movie. You think so? Hecklers. You think you have yeah, us? I like it. All right, let's do it. All right, well, this was fun. This is the Sports Express Network and the Auburn Pride Show bringing you the best of the community sports lifestyle. We'll see you next week.